Hello, the okay. floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Shu Chang from Rutgers University. So it's a pleasure to be here and share our work on the Fairness Aware Federated Recommendation. So the uh, fairness problem uh, has recently been an important topic in recommender system. And here we refer to the user group fairness problem. And we require the system to treat different user groups equally. And uh, in the definition, we consider unfairness as estimated as the difference between user groups in terms of their recommendation performances. So however, uh, the user group features that requires fairness control are usually sensitive feature as well. For example, the gender, age, and sexual orientation. So users might have privacy concerns and to, to reveal this information, to, to overcome this privacy issue, a feasible solution is adopting the federated learning. So as we have just seen in the last work presented by Kiwan. And uh, the basic idea is that uh, we need to maintain the sensitive data on the user devices without uploading it. And uh, each device only communicates the uh, model parameters and public shareable data with the central server. So, uh, but in the algorith uh, algorithmic perspective, so the fairness control needs this, uh, needs this sensitive group information, but the federated system wants to protect it. And this uh, natural conflict has also been recognized in other related works uh, as well in recent fair federated learning research. While some existing work study the vertical federated learning scenarios where uh, each machine has its own uh, user group distributions, uh, our setting is a horizontal federated learning scenario where each device corresponds to a user and each user only belongs to one group. So in general, we consider our problem setting as an instance in the joint area among uh, recommender system, federated learning, and fairness control. So our goal is to learn a recommendation model that has the controllability of the unfairness or the fairness that's evaluated as the difference between user group uh, performances. And the main challenge is that the unfairness loss here uh, as we described, is not directly separable by users. So uh, additionally, this evaluator uh, also depends on the metric of user performance, uh, f of u over here. And uh, this can be represented by all kinds of ranking metrics, like recall F1 and NDCG. As I will illustrate later, uh, it is usually hard to find a universal metric that works for all other metrics. So as a uh, solution, um, we consider the setting where F of U is related to the negative of local recommendation loss. So the smaller the loss, the higher the performance. Then the gradient of the overall loss that combines the fairness and the recommendation accuracy is now separable. So the gradient is separable as the uh, original gradient of the recommendation loss multiplied by a scalar d. And we have a simple, uh, a simple intuitive explanation for this derivation of d, which is um, when you have a user that belongs to an advantage group with higher performance, it should slow down its local training Otherwise, you should speed up its local training when it belongs to the disadvantaged group. And now the only thing left to communicate between the devices and the server is the aggregated information of user group uh, performance. And know that this group average performance is our aggregated statistics. So this indicates that we can apply differential privacy to communicate this information with disguise on each user. 
but the aggregated information is still accurate. So one challenge in this part is that we only have one group feature per user. Then using a single perturbation still expose users ground truth, uh, ground truth information. So in detail, if you consider adding a random noise, random perturbation, and it will gradually reveal the true information of users over time because one can estimate the average of the uploaded values over epochs, the, uh, and the inference confidence grows as the number of communication rounds increases. So typical large number theory. So we need a user-wise noise that serves as a fixed mask. And, uh, but only using this user-wise noise may also expose the info because we need to upload, somehow upload this information of f of u and only one of the group changes the value of f of u. For the other group, because the user does not belong to this group, so it never changes. So as a, a solution, we need to combine two kinds of noises so that all the previous limitations are gone. And specifically, you have each local device that needs to upload the summation and the counts, the updates of the uh, summation and the counts of all groups and uh, with the noise, then the central server will calculate the corresponding statistics by the ratio of summation and counts. So the whole fairness control framework in the federated system has little extra communication and computational cost since it reuses the um, recommendation loss gradient without extra calculation and the uploads and synchronization of statistics are only proportional to the number of user N and the number of group K. So compared to the transmission of modal parameters, this extra cost could be uh, negligible. We conducted experiments on two real world data sets to verify the effectiveness and we apply our framework based on uh, matrix factorization backbone and consider two alternatives. So F2 FM correspond to our uh, original framework with some MF and the F3 MF assumes shareable user features. So we do not have to use the differential privacy module to protect user privacy. And uh, we also tested different kinds of group features from non-sensitive user activity features and uh, sensitive user gender and age. So we can see on the right uh, that the unfairness drops as we increase the uh, coefficient of the fairness loss, which is the lambda. And uh, as a trade-off, you can see some, uh, sometimes it sacrifices the recommendation accuracy. And similar patterns uh, are also observed on other accuracy measure, uh, measures like NDCD and F1. So uh, when you further increase the lambda to control the unfairness, uh, you will observe a kind of a threshold as showcased here in circled in red. So the reduction of this unfairness becomes so strong that the group differences becomes insignificant. So when that happens, uh, you might see uh, advantage group switch to disadvantage group and vice versa. And this frequent switch may induce this uh, unstable fairness control. So, and this problem may become even worse when you have more than two groups involved. Uh, since any two of the groups becomes too close, they might switch. So as a note, uh, stable fairness control happens only under the switching threshold. Okay, additionally, we also point out that one should carefully design the variance of the perturbation. Since uh, when you choose the variance, you should know that there is an upper bound that is related to the empirical performance value of each group. If it is too large, the aggregated noise is gonna dominate uh, your control. So, also, if you have a group with larger number of uh, n here means the number of users, 
So if a group with larger number of users in it, it will also help you to widen the feasible region of the uh, choice of uh, noise variance. Okay, so, and in terms of the metric correlations when evaluating the uh, unfairness, so we are cons we ha we have consistent cases where the loss based unfairness also controls all other metrics, but there are also inconsistent cases where different metrics are different. So in this case, for example, we observe increasing fairness on recall at ten, but decreasing fairness on F one at ten. So this indicates a potential trade-off between these two metrics. And in this sense, we keep skeptical on whether uh, there exists a universal metric that controls fairness with all uh, other metrics. And an extra observation in our experiments is that uh, the federated solution, uh, even without fairness control, it might still achieve significantly better user group fairness compared to the centralized uh, solution. And this phenomenon has also been observed in other fair, uh, fairness aware federated learning tasks as well. And uh, as a summary, our work first formulated the user group fairness control problem in federated recommender systems. And we have proposed uh, an effective solution that is based on a loss based unfairness metric control. And uh, also it maintains user privacy through differential privacy modules. So we have provided our uh, implementation in the following link. So any comments or feedback will be welcome. And uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, that's my talk. Thank you. At the moment, I don't see any questions on my nice device, but I have a question myself. Uh, so you tried out several user features and particularly for age, you looked into several user groups. Um, what, what's your observation that, is it the number of groups that plays a big, uh, big role or is it how it's distributed? If you have like one bigger group than the other one, like size of group, uh, and how does it affect the overall results? Yes, so uh, when you have only two groups, the uh, problem is very simple. You just need to make the two groups uh, the move closer to each other. But when you have multiple groups and the fairness definition becomes uh, a little bit more complicated because uh, if you want to have all the groups have the same performance, sometimes it's not a, a very good setting, but uh, if you still want to do that, uh, when you have a fairness uh, loss that's defined in, uh, for example, in this way, and you will have multiple groups that's gonna control their differences uh, in a pairwise way. And uh, when that happens, you basically have groups that have larger differences that move faster and uh, and the result of the learning is usually chaotic. And because uh, some groups might already have similar performance already, and uh, they should be considered fair with each other. But for others, uh, you might have an aggregated effect. So one group might have multiple other groups to compare. Some of them are closer, some, some of them are very far away. And the problem becomes uh, very complicated. And what you, you might observe a group that is generally an advantage group at the beginning, but then goes back to the, uh, goes down to the disadvantage group and goes up uh, frequently with, uh, uh, with other groups changing in a dy dynamical way. So it's very, uh, it's much harder to control when you have m m uh, many more groups than just two. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. I don't see more questions here at the moment and also as a matter of time moving forward to the next speaker. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks very much. Recording stopped. Okay. Um